What draws masses of people to South Dakota for pheasant hunting season each fall? Well, there's a lot more to it than dirty boots and cackling birds. My name is Jared Griffin. I am from Hallsville, Missouri, and that is a town you've never heard of. I started coming here when my, my lab jet, he was just about a little over one year old, and I threw him in the truck with some buddies from high school, and we came up here and stomped around on every piece of public land that we could and started shooting birds, and it hooked me ever since. So every year I load the dog up, sometimes by myself, sometimes with some friends, and I come up here and I spend five days hunting some of the best upland game habitat that uh, I think exists. This place is super special, uh, special to me. I will continue to come back here um, like I do every year. So my name is Tanaya Bethke and I'm the R3 coordinator for South Dakota Game Fish and Parks. So I teach a lot of classes where we're teaching people how to hunt. Um, my team is responsible for all the hunt safe classes aquatic education and then we also lead Harvest South Dakota which is a Rooster. Oh, shit. Rooster. My name is Chris Hall. I work for the Game Fish and Parks Department in South Dakota. Communication specialist. Chase a few our way. Both ways. <laughs> you put somebody down here and shoot them when they cross. Good luck. Have a good day. You can do them. Cool. Alright, sounds good. Heal. Makes them look mean. All right, uh, my name is Travis Runya. I'm a senior upland game biologist with the South Dakota Game Fish and Parks. I work with uh, research and management of upland game species in the state, such as pheasants and grouse. You know, I was fortunate to grow up in a, in a hunting family. I've been hunting since you know I was you know 10 or 12 years old back in, in Iowa, and just kind of stuck with me and um, just absolutely love it. And it's pretty much what I do every weekend. Right now. Oh, there's a flying by. <laughs> There. Oh, duck. Sluice, you can see this first one here. We rise over the hill. There's going to be some more, and there's going to make pretty much a giant circle through this thing and just kind of hit all the lowland. Cool. So. All right. So as far as spacing, and I'm pretty anal about shoulder to shoulder, not getting too far ahead, too far behind. Oh, yeah. But that's just my particular taste. Yeah. Just, uh, Thirty yards apart or so. Sounds right. good. Any other safety stuff you guys want to go over before we get out there? Yeah, nothing, here. nothing on the ground, nothing low. Yep. Got it. Keep a shot yeah. above the dogs. Everybody. Sounds like a plan. Yes, we have a really nice program that we started about 10 years ago in South Dakota. It's called the Conservation Reserve Enhancement Program. And it's basically a, a program that pays landowners to convert cropland to grassland. Uh, and it's a partnership uh, payment that comes from the USDA and the Game Fish and Parks. And what's great about it is it's open for public hunting for the entire 10 to 15 year contract. We have about 80,000 acres in the state and some of the, the best public hunting opportunities we have in the state for pheasants right now. I started seeing these people who were amazing role models and I have these female friends who mentored me and really helped me to feel like I belonged in this community and that my values were shared by this community. Um, so they would invite me over and like teach me how to process an elk quarter or uh, we would all cook wild game on the grill together and then have a beer and, and enjoy this meal and share a sense of community with each other. Um, and I just really, I loved that and immediately felt like this was my home and this was my community and I felt ownership of that. And good girl. Good girl. Good job. Good girl. Good girl. Yeah, I mean, South Dakota is the you know, pheasant capital of the world for a reason. It's really the, the habitat that we have. And if you think about a pheasant, they spend their basically their whole life in a one square mile area. And as you drive across South Dakota, you can just see the mix of land. It's half grass, half crop, lots of slough land. And it's just basically uh, all the habitat needs are just scattered across this great landscape. And it's really uh, you know, why we're the pheasant capital of the world.
you know, one of the biggest things that, that really tipped me over is, is specific to South Dakota in pheasant season is we call it rolling out the orange carpet in these communities. Folks like places like Aberdeen and Watertown and Siston and even Kresbarg or Pier in these small communities, Winter, Mitchell, um, really greet these hunters, whether they've been there for years or whether they're first time South Dakota hunters, um, to kind of open up their homes and their communities and really welcome them. It, maybe it's a meat raffle in Eureka where the, you know there's 20 people from Eureka and there's 200 hunters and you couldn't tell who's who, you know, who's the local and who's not. Um, and really showing folks that, that it's more about, more than just about the pheasant hunting, it's, it's kind of this, our way of life, our way, the way we do things here is, is really special. It's kind of a unique history because everything back in the day, there was four rail lines mm -hmm. out our back door. Now there's just one, but uh, sometimes the troops weren't allowed to get off the train. Sometimes they were. And then with that being said, if they weren't allowed to get off the train, the volunteers and the Red Cross canteen ladies would just take sandwiches and just throw them at the windows. And, they, and I just envisioned that was that kids game, Hungry Hungry Hippos, where they, the <laughs> arms just come out and grab them, you know, as they come out and grab them. So, um, but otherwise they, they were allowed to get off the train. They had like coffee and cookies and uh, cake donuts and stuff like that. And every, every day they always baked the birthday cake because it was always somebody's birthday every day. In the end, South Dakota is full of great hunting and great people. Not only can you fill limits of birth in the field, but Aberdeen has entertainment like hockey teams, good food, and ways to spend your time when you're not in the field. As the leaves start to drop and the north winds blow, you can count on that orange carpet rolling out like clockwork. And you should be here. <laughs>